The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction and for instruction in righteousness, or training in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent to God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, or very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, and inerrant great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Sitkano, to the highest, and peace be to be the mankind on this earth, to those who believe in my Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, by faith alone, in Christ alone, so that the peace of our Lord our God and His joy should be full in us, the Pleroma status, the Plerotha status. The word of the Lord our God demands that we walk in truth and in light, so that the great goodness and goodwill which has been designed for them who love our Christ, in the short span of time given to us to be a witnesses for Him, the short span of time we do not know when is our rapture, neither our death, but in this short span of time, we are investing for the things which are going to come in the futurity. The things wherewith right now it could be called good and faithful in little things. So the things which are going to come in the heavenly realm will be for us in the future, in the glory of our Lord. So the things which are going to come in the heavenly realm and for this short span of time what we invest to His glory, Wherewith you and I have been chosen to be called the faithful steward, the faithful servant, in honoring Lord's word above his name in this short span of time. And in this short span of time, the world hates you. Because you are not of this world, but you have been separated from the world for the glory of the Lord. So for that reason, our Lord, our God says, remember that the Lord was being hated by the world. So it will be with you. But know this one thing, if they have kept thy word, certainly they will keep your word as well. And for that reason, whenever we go back and learn the greatest process of all time in 1 John and 2 John and 3 John, the truth, the truth, the truth, whom they love in truth, whom they love to walk in light, whom they love in truth. Such a great lesson for us, the summary of Proverbs chapter 8 verse 20 to teach that our Lord, our God, walks along, trades along in righteousness. Christ our God, the Father in heaven, loved to walk only in the justice, and the both together are been called the righteousness and the justice to be the holiness of Yahweh Elohim. And the same path why he establishes for us in Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17 to tell, all scripture is being God breathed so that you could be trained, trained, trained in the instruction of righteousness of Yahweh Elohim, for that you are being given this word for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction. And without this mind of Christ, though the short span of time that you have been placed over here in this earth, so that now you are going to take back your time in the heavenly realm, when you are going to come with our Lord of our God, in the, in the coming millennium kingdom, so that you are faithful in little things, so that you can be granted over the great things of the Lord, that the true believer out of this world to the Father's house, and every godly work of His will be fully rewarded, and in the coming millennium kingdom, our Lord, our God will make every faithful servant to be set over Lord's possession. And what a wonderful grace it is for us. We invest a short span of time on this earth that we survive when we come to the time of our consciousness in the sight of our Lord, our God. We believe upon my Lord to understand that we have been separated in love, having predestinated for His glory. And after being separated in this love, we come to walk in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, every moment that we go. Not to grieve, not to squelch, not to lie, but make sure that the greater we said as in yesterday's tape, Lord arise, Jehovah arise in Numbers chapter 10 verses 35 and 36. And set back to the myriads of Israel, but we cannot say set back because every breath is a battle for us in the spiritual combat. So if it is not by the mentoring minister of Lord God, the Holy Spirit to take in our path in the, in the life of which we have been kept alive on this earth, certainly you cannot know what is the process of getting arised. So dear brethren, being Lord's Day today, and almost all to understand, the October 31st of 1517, where the first time a man under the guts of the Lord who went along to nail 
on the cathedral of the Roman Catholic, the 95 Thesis. The 95 Thesis of Martin Luther. And from there on began the Reformation movement. So today we are 22nd, the next week will be 29th, and then we come back again to look the work every day that we are doing. But in order to know that October 31st, 1517 was the time when our Lord of God rose, this great Reformation movement, so that today we have Bible in our hands, so that we can enjoy the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, every breath, so that our life could be meaningful for His glory. Such great work which they have done and which have left for us to carry this torch, to carry the gaitan. And to see that every pulpit goes along with the biblical preaching and the biblical standards and the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit to be pure and true. So that the name of the Lord our God alone to be glorified. By reaching MGG in the Baltimore privileges. If the reformation movement began to give for them the Bible in their hands, in spite of all the martyrs, in spite of all them burning alive. The Roman Catholicism, the greatest evil that could ever come upon the Christendom. The Popery. No one in the word of the Lord tells to burn them alive, except the people who followed the process of darkness. Making their children to be burnt alive, giving them as a sacrifice to get into their membership of Baal. But in Christ our Lord, he said, forgive them, Father, they do not know what they have done. And if that was the attitude of our Lord to see that none should perish, but how they could certainly burn them out. The main reason is Satan never wants you to know the truth. The main thought is Satan never wants you to learn the truth. And not to go through proper exegeomai in Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic. Not to teach to you all daily, not weekly, but daily. Daily mentoring ministry is the process of our Lord. To declare them the right word of the Lord daily, not in the terms of what they think in weekly ones. But since we have assembled in the Lord's day, and remembering those 500 years back of history, so that we can carry forward this torch, and we cannot carry forward this thoughts until and unless Lord God, the Holy Spirit, leads us. So we shall have a word of prayer and come back and learn in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, what our Lord, our God, has prepared and kept for us in today's spiritual manna, to the praise of His glory in His grace. In the privacy of your priesthood, the confession of your sins through rebound, and getting back to learn what is our life on this earth. Father, as we are going to study these things, we pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, enlighten us. Father, without the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, being rose to lead us in thy path, there is nothing that we can understand. So, Father, you have given for us this great privilege to understand this truth. The lives of those who have been for us as martyrs and gave for us this Bible in our hands. So thankful we are, Lord, for thy plan. Help us to carry forward this torch to the next generation as well, so that they can know the late medieval times, what they have done, though they might have not emphasized about the Christian way of life. And in this church age, let us emphasize that in the 21st century of your enlightenment period after 500 years. The importance of the mystery doctrine, O Lord. Without the mystery doctrine, what can we know? The man created of your own image to walk in Enkai, and Dikayasune Kai Hosiate is the Salatia. As we're going to study these things by that God, the Holy Spirit enlighten us, O Father. In Christ's name we pray, so Lord. Amen. So as we're noticing the things pertaining to the word of the Lord of our God, the spirit of truth witnesses only the truth. And we have been placed over here to witness and to be a witness only for the truth and nothing but the truth. For that reason, the bona fide gifted men who are male believers to whom our Lord our God has given this work laid down upon their shoulders. The work of greatest reformation movement through Martin Luther, Zwingli, Calvin and further taking account into consideration. The translation of the Bible from Latin to English through William Tyndale and Dishendorf, Wycliffe and not to name even as such more where our mind fails to remember them because they have really done great work. We are standing upon the innocent blood of those men 
who have really led their life, the purpose to live for God, the purpose was to only honor Lord's word above his name, so that the world could be enlightened with the right Bible. And right now, even after 2,000 years of Christ our Lord ascension, we have been still kept alive over here on this earth in the church age for the purpose so that we can know for what reason we have been placed to the glorification of our Lord by daily intake of the mind of Christ. The greatest problem with us, dear brethren, the theological system dealing with the end time events which teaches that all prophecy has been fulfilled in the death of Christ and the destruction of the Jerusalem temple in AD 70. And they further admit that there is the final judgment day and they deny the rapture, the great tribulation, the, mini the millennium kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. The prophecies in the Bible are allegorized and spiritualized away by this theology. They do not understand that AD 96 is the completion of the canon of scripture. And the maturity of his letters, when Apostle John writes for us in 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, and 3 Timothy, uh, 1 John, 2 John, and 3 John, not Timothy. He concludes for us to tell, walk in truth, walk in truth, walk in truth. They, them, are love in truth. You cannot walk in truth if you are not in the fellowship of the light. You cannot get back into the fellowship of the light if you are not able to walk by using rebound, 1 John, 1 9. And that fellowship which was with our Lord, our God, so that your joy might be full. Wherewith the peace of our Lord of God is being used as a garrison of our, of our hearts so that we get every concept of mind, the true comprehension, or every thought getting into captivity for Christ in simple words. So that the peace of our Lord of God is the arbitrator for us, is umpire for us. And that peace of our Lord of God is a garrison for us who protects against all such odds. So that whenever we walk in light, in truth, we can enjoy that joy of our Lord to be fulfilled in us. Even the mechanics, what we have noted in John chapter 15 and following. The mechanics of the joy of our Lord our God could be full in us. The mechanics of, if you are not able to abide with Christ, we will be withered off. Not only just withered off, the mechanics which teach to us further. Exemplifying for us the truth to tell. Without the proper Rima declarations, you will be perished. And the proper Rima declarations have been taught by the pastor teacher who is loving, who's loving to have a great relish to spend for you. His life is laid down for you so that he can lay down his soul for you. And that great relish what he can give for you. And he tells, though I may be loved more for you and your love may be less, then too I don't mind. The love what he is having love towards them is a spiritual doctrine, the spiritual relish. The love what they want to show forth for them is the material relish. But he says, I have not been a burden to you because parents provide for the children and not children for the parents. And he furthermore exemplifies, this one thing I have done wrong against thee, kindly forgive you. What was that mistake he has done, not taking from them the money? But in return with his own two hands, he labored, paid his own rent. And the reason behind all of this thing, he want to say for us. So that we can learn what is the right duty of the pastor teacher to train you up in the, in the light and in the fellowship of the truth. I love to relish in the spiritual relish being spent for you my life. And I love you with a great love, with an abundant love. Though you may love not me with the same love. The same love is what they have to get back to put your step in step of the mentoring work of Lord God, the Holy Spirit being the same and walk in the footsteps wherewith our Lord our God has told and where Paul tells I walked in the steps of Christ and you walk in the steps of me. And you have not been, male, you have not though maybe loved the way how I loved you abundantly. And that doesn't refer only to the material sense. But the attitude where he wanted to be everyone equivalent to the master. The attitude the servants could be equivalent to the master so that that's enough. And everywhere they go, they can carry this torch to the next generation by the spirit of truth. And the witness for this great spirit of truth is to relish only in truth. We walk in light and in truth. Anyone who is being in darkness and he tells that he's walking in truth, he's a liar. He does not know himself, he's deceiving himself. 
In today's Christendom of the so-called kleptes, lustes, misthotes, tupas, canapes, tiflos, and shoras, warranted minded pastors, can how many tell that they are walking in truth? Can how many tell they are preaching the right biblical preaching with the right method of isagogical, categorical, nexitical explanation of the word, with the right dispensing technique of dispensations? How many of them are they doing it? Far less they can honor the lives of those men who have been absolutely burnt and martyred for us. The Bible, though we have now 500 years in our hand, for this October 31st of 2017, a man who had the guts of our Lord, who went and nailed to the cathedral, the 95 Thesis, telling that justification is by faith alone in Christ alone, and furthermore teaching to them that it is by the word of the Lord our God that you could be edified. Only the mind of Christ can reveal you the truth and it is the right duty of the pastor teacher to daily teach the word of the Lord our God and particularly emphasizing upon the mystery doctrine of the church age in this present enlightenment period what we are holding now the Bible in our hands with the proper dispensing technique of dispensations and with the proper intense method of, or of hermeneutical principle can we tell we are doing Lord's work greatly can we tell we are proud for Christ can we tell we are jealous for law The same thing what we read in Galatians chapter 4, verses 16 and 17. I became an enemy for you because I tell to you the truth. And as he stop there, he further tells, it is not ideally what they are able to do themselves. Because of the jealousy of your hatred <coughs> towards the truth what you teach, they may debar you from the church. And you don't get jealous over them. If they debar you, but you be happy with fulfilling Romans chapter 16 verse 17 to teach, depart from them who do not walk according to the rule of the word of the Lord of God. But you don't show forth your jealousness. If you're teaching them the sound Bible doctrine and the people go from there and tell that you're a cult, be happy for that. Rather than sowing to become like people, like priests. Rather than rubbing them the way how 2 Timothy chapter 4 describes for us, people don't end your own Bible doctrine, but they have the itching ears. And they heap up for themselves those pastors who shall teach them according to the terms of their itching ears, with a great erotic discourse, with the sure arts of theology, what they have learned, like this, what we have noted in the way how this theology world goes today, the end events to tell them that it is in AD 70 all the things have been made out. And furthermore, they admit that there is a final judgment day, but they deny the rapture, the tribulation, and the millennium kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. They are men who have been taught, and they say this is Baptist teaching. The false teachings. The Bible was been completed in 1896. The same voice what Martin Luther Rose, William Tyndale Rose. The same voice they were been honoring Lord's word above his name. But remember, dear brethren, we don't require 10,000 fighting men out of the 30,000, the way how Gideon took. Among in that 10,000, only 300 were being used. That's enough. In each and every era, beginning from the first century, we could be counted in the 300 men. That's enough. Our Lord, our God knows with men it is impossible, but with Him all things are possible. Only we are His instruments. He knows how to use us, how to train us up, how to make our minds fit for the battle of the Lord, our God, by daily intake of the mind of Christ. The people may come in the terms of their own love to look upon the horses and chariots, as Psalms chapter 20, verse 8. And when we come to verse number 9, we have been told, but our Yahweh Elohim, it is He who is going to rise. And we shall never bow down, or we shall never fall. But he shall make us to stand uprightly as a witness for the truth. And we are going to attest to the fact. That's enough for us. The voice wherewith we come to tell that AD 96 was the completion of canon of scripture. And furthermore, the church age which has been taken course now in the 21st century as well till to the 15th century the papal force and then we got the reformation movement and when we got the reformation movement we got bible in our own hands in the country india through william carey who translated the bible into more than 26 languages what a great privilege it would be for us that that our lord of our god in the midst of such demon possessed countries he enlightens us through his word 
and he strengthens us day by day for the big battles in Christ to teach not to worry about the things pertaining to the darkness of this world but to worry to know that the joy that our Lord our God has given through peace and the light that reigns in you and everywhere that you walk in the fellowship of the light and in the fellowship of the truth you are unlighting by holding forth the word of the Lord our God says Philippians 2 14 and 15 so that your labor is not in vain your work is not in vain in the midst of the spouse and crooked generations you have been there a light to the world and furthermore, he tells not to worry about the darkness of this world, but first you become a light to the world. And how the people, they are not able to look upon the light. Though we have the Bible in our languages, we cannot understand them. Because every moron who thinks in a vision he's been spoken, in a dream he's been spoken by the Lord, he comes to stand in the pulpit. And he makes this Christendom to be worst more yet. You know how it is. They're decorating the dead body again by their own lustful patterns of the old sin nature. They're decorating the dead body again and again to tell that they're really living a true Christian life. Therefore they come over here to tell for a few pieces of barley or for some handful of bread. They come over here and they tell they're doing Lord's work. And they start the ministry for money. They work about the oil business, the kerchief business, the water business. And do you know who they are? These are clouds without rain. These are the spots. In the great party of our Lord. These are the men who have taken, in my country, India, the roots at the present time, who are contemporary to me. At the cost of ignoring this Protestant Reformation and the teachings which they have to come back and learn in the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic and teach. If they are not able to make up the time, at least they can go through the interlinear scripture and read the lexicons and study and go back to dig the truth and tell them. They are answerable to the Lord and we can know them by their words. And it's no marvel even Satan could change for them in the, town, the terms of the light of metaschematis omens. But why you, Christian, as being a true believer in the Lord, have been called? You have been called not to become a metaschematis of one process, but you have been called to become the metamorphomai. The renovation standards of your thinking to be changed. Therefore, we have been told in Ephesians 4.23 and Romans 12.2, in the renovation of your mind to be renewed, and in, Roman, in Ephesians 4.24, because the new man which has been made, which has been catasus, which has been created, in the terms of Dikaiasune, Kaihosi, Etis, Tesalatia, in the holiness of our Lord and in the benignity of the truth, benignity, benignity, benignity of the truth. So that every concept of thought which you get should be brought into captivity for Christ, because now you are no longer to be as a term pertaining to this earth, but you have been a true believer in Christ. And every faithful steward wherewith he could be a true believer will certainly work only Father's will, walking in light and in truth. Because he knew the second phase of that coming will be the Lord's righteous judgment. And he knew that those who have refused his grace will have a certain tough time. Therefore, this short span of time, you know how great would have been that they died the death of martyr, when our Lord our God knew to call them back home at the right time to pluck out. The Apostle Paul tells in Philippians 1.25, For me to survive in the flesh is needful for you, not for me. What a great privilege it would be for us to understand these terms. It is needful for you, not for me. In the like manner, he knew why he rose Martin Luther. He knew why he rose William Tyndale. He knew why he rose those great men like William Carey, David Livingston, who all came along to the other parts of the world as well to enlighten them in the darkness, what they had and could give in their own hands the Bible, which is the only light. The truth is the only light. And our Lord God's hand is not short to provide you those bona fide gifted pastor teachers whose duty is to daily teach the word of the Lord with proper exegesis, isagogics and categories. A shepherd after God's own heart who shall feed you with knowledge and with understanding so that when you can know, you can see and you can place them as your intelligence in your mind that this is the work of Yahweh Elohim who has borrowed it, who has created it, this church age. And what a great privilege it would be for us that we have been placed in these terms. Because we do not know when is the rapture, yet our Lord our God delays the rapture for one reason, none should perish. Do you know if we can go back from Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 20 to 21, it takes minimum 40 to 50 years every day if you have been taught. 
And even that time is not sufficient for us because of the divine illumination given to us. And for that which our Lord of God has trained for us to be the kings for Christ. For which our Lord of God has trained for us for his glory, for his purpose. And what a great work it would be for us to enjoy, to relish and to cherish in those terms, to be spent for our Lord of God. Not for the sake of your monetary value, not for the sake of your physical material things. But feeding you with love, speaking one another in truth, not sinning, not grieving, not lying. Speaking to one another only the truth, the truth, the truth. And in 1896, when Apostle John is writing for us those things, what a privilege it is. A man in the mature age. The dying declaration of that man, apart from revolution, he teaches to us. Truth. In 2nd John, truth. In 3rd John, truth. Emphasizing in, 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 in return, in simple terms, the word of the Lord of our God. And that truth should be worshipped in spirit, says John 4.24, the key principle given for us long back by our Lord. Those who worship him must worship him in spirit and biblical truth. And that spirit is nothing but to be controlled of the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. When you use rebound at the moment of your salvation, you have been sealed and kept until the day of redemption by our Lord to do his work on this earth. Whether you believe it or not, you have been taken as a sealment. Until the day of redemption, you have been placed so that you can get back to know the way how. Rebecca came to meet her husband by believing the words of his of the master servants. Likewise, when we go back to take our twofold, it's only an enormous deposit. And this church is with the greatest alikenekatesis to live and to execute the spiritual life of unique one in the godliness, with the three stages of adult spiritual one, spiritual self-esteem to spiritual autonomy and then to spiritual maturity. Yet we have been placed with such great work, with dear brethren, whether you believe it or not, such great work. This work, wherewith the burden and the load is not greater for us, because it is Christ our Lord who carries this load and this burden. It is He who is going to lead us in all the ways that He finds for us to be triumphant. It is he who is going to take for the things pertaining only when we obey to his word and abide in his word so that our fruit might be great when we abide only for his truth. And what a great privilege it would be for us when we look and understand about those terms. That we who are not fit for anything, being the earthen vessels in the mind of Christ, given for us this greatest glory and given for us the church which will be the future's wife of our Lord, to design them, to orient them according to the will of Father in heaven. And to make every believer to be perfect and complete, for which reason this dispensation, ministerial gift has been given to them, says Colossians 1.24. So that in this great dispensation, ministerial gift, they could understand the purpose of the law. They could understand the purpose of Christ. They could know, like William Kelly, like William Carey and Martin Luther, William Tyndale, so many men of a great realm who have left their lives for the glory of the Lord, not even able to relish and think that we come only once to this earth and if we go back out, we cannot enjoy, so let us enjoy the deeds of the flesh. They never even worry. In fact, even indeed, William Tyndale left everything for the sake of Christ. He was hiding in a place so that he can translate the work, isolated himself. Martin Luther stayed so that he could be like one of the Puritans who could grow back again the beard and so that he could not be made easily be made known by the people that he was Martin Luther. For what they have done all these, these things? They have done all these things because they need to pro propagate the word of the Lord of our God. And they have come back not to cherish and nourish in the things pertaining to this earth, but they went along to do the things pertaining to Christ in the heavenly realm. And what a great privilege it would be for us to understand these terms in the enlightenment ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to know, even till date, though after 500 years of reformation, we don't find the proper teachings in our pulpits, though we have completed Bible in our hands. 
The ministers who enter there teach in the terms that the rapture has already taken place. There is no great tribulation. There is no millennial kingdom of our Lord of God. But they haven't even known the simple word until being mentioned in the Bible for particularly Psalm 110 verse 1. Matthew 23, Luke 21, Acts 3, Romans 11, 25, Isaiah 32, Revelation 20 verse 5 and 1 Corinthians 11:26. That simple word, until, one little word, until, could answer them back their errors, could train them up that there is yet a rapture, to train them up there is yet a tribulation, to train them up that we are going to come back again in the Millennium Kingdom rule. Because if we have been faithful in the short span of time that we invest for the future of the Millennium, the 60 years are nothing, dear brethren, if you go back and look upon the cycle of life. Reaching God consciousness at the age of 11 or 12. Believing in Christ and becoming trained at the age of 35. And from the age of 35 till to the point of death, how many years our Lord our God could see us fit to be on this earth. For his work to be carried, for his burden to be taken, for his purpose to be oriented. He knows even 90 years or even in fact like Moses, 120 years are nothing. It is like just a two hours or three hours of drama that we play on this earth. If one day is equivalent to 1,000 years in the Christ Lord's eye, then one hour will be equivalent to 40 years. So to the maximum, we stay over here in the presence of the Lord for three hours, though it is contrary for 120 years. And some areas out at the age of 20, 24, or 25, because dying sin unto death, not able to believe the truth, and not able to orient their lives to the purpose of Christ. Some die at the age of 60, some die at the age of 47, or some die at the age of their reasons and the methods, whatever they can come. But our Lord our God says in Deuteronomy chapter 11 verse 20, Your son and your son's sons will have a great days as the days of heaven upon the earth in their lives. The good land which I have promised them. And what a great good land we have right now, a land flowing with the completed cow of scripture, a land flowing with the mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit. Where else we find our time to cherish and nourish apart from this great world? A good land where the Israelites were being honored and to be taken the privilege to enter a land flowing with milk and honey or gushing with milk and honey. But now we have at each and every part of this entire world a good land with a completed kind of scripture. And for such reasons, our Lord our God rose this great Protestant Reformation movement with those men who could nail to the cathedral door the wrongs and the mistakes to show forth and to rise only the standards of Yahweh Elohim. To show forth that their mind of man is not worth. To show forth that the mind of man is going to become dust. And they did their work faithfully, even though they have been martyred to be put to death. How much of guts it requires today to speak the truth in the midst of this greatest evil apostate period in the churches. If there are no tithes, the pastor will be absolutely taking to the point to be shaken and to be trembled. Because if he tells there is no tithe, then he cannot survive. And not weekly once, if it is daily, that they have to come and teach the word of the Lord and they have to grow up in the knowledge of Bible doctrine. The congregation will get fear and the pastor teacher doesn't even have guts to take that term in his mouth. Is that not we are able to find today in our thoughts? Is that not we are able to look and seek and search in our minds? Is that not the way how 2 Timothy chapter 4 is fulfilling in our midst rather than Kerusathon Lagan, in season and out of season because of the day of my witnesses? where they have been called. But they go to take, not to endure sound Bible doctrine. They come and enjoy not to take in the word of the Lord our God. And they just form the church where they can come weekly once and assembly over there and to think that they're doing God's work. How great it would be if everyone would be like Martin Luther. William Carey, William Tyndale. And everyone has been designed so that our fellowship could be great with our Lord, says 1 John 1, 1 to 3, so that our joy might be filled. Only when you walk in truth, only when you love in the presence of our Lord in light and in pure joy of pure love. Every believer, in fact, indeed, has been called to be greater. Then the work what Martin Luther has left, then the work what William Carey has left, then the work what William Kelly has left. 
we have now the completed can of scripture in our hands with the various examples of the Old Testament as well. We have the completed Bible. We have the land flowing with the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and the movement of salvation by faith alone in Christ alone. We have everything that you can ever even imagine that could be for a worth for you in your life. A land flowing with milk and honey where you and your son, sons will be absolutely there for you to enjoy as the days of heaven upon this earth. But why you quit? Dying sin unto death. If our Lord of God seems fit for us to work His will, like Apostle John, He knows how to protect us. He knows how to rule us. He knows how to take us. We are His unprofitable slaves. We are His slaves. We are His born slaves. We have been His prisoners. And he leads us for his glory in whichever manner he wants us. Behind the bars or in the open air. So that you can communicate the mystery doctrine of the church age. And in the present 21st century we have a freedom, freedom, freedom to communicate the truth. By your mannerism of lives. In your pulpits, wherever you go and you have your peeves, so that you can make them to be available for Lord's glory. So that they can enrich and go back and become the ambassadors. They can become the greatest work for missionaries in Christ. Because every believer by default is an ambassador, but he could be trained to become a missionary for Christ. And if they're not able to find the things pertaining to preach the gospel, at least let them wake up that the holy manner of walk of life will teach others the gospel. What a privilege it would be for us to understand in these terms, in this life, in those great reality wherewith you and I have been chosen in the Lord. What else do you want to make your life to be worthy enough? Do you not know William Carey, the first wife, the second wife, the third wife? Yet he went along to do Lord's work. He never worried the substitutes of this life which have been given for them. He worried only about one thing, the work and the plan of Lord our God to this earth. And right now we stand upon the blood of such innocent men. And we haven't even read Bible in our hands, at least kneeling down once in our entire life. We haven't even written the Bible kneeling down at least once in the uninspired language of whichever English or whichever manner you go with the version. Far less you can dare enough to think to kneel down and write in the internal scriptures. Far less you dare enough enough to think after writing in the internal scripture in the original languages and manage your time for that. How do you honor their work? We are not getting the things pertaining to the mediator's work. In fact, indeed, when you are not able to honor the works of the mediators, what we have got Bible in our hands, then how can you honor the work of the prophets? the apostles the words of our lord and savior jesus christ by living to rec to recollect to remember and to reflect how can you when you don't value the mediators by that i mean this human one where our lord our god has made this bible to be in our hands when you don't remember their work when you don't remember their purpose when you don't remember their lives how can you, in fact, dare enough to remember the words that have been there in the Bible through the progress prophets? Malachi being not a prophet, but the one who have written together, my messenger, the life of Daniel, the life of Ezekiel, the life of Jeremiah, Isaiah. What a great work we have to remember their work. And he shall rise such watchman to be the Zakat, who preserve them according to the mind of Christ. That's the real work of Christ. Likewise, he has been rising those faithful men who come according to the will of and the heart of our Lord to feed you with only knowledge and with wisdom from the mind of Christ. So that the word of the Lord alone can be the ultimate rule of church, says 1 John 1 and 2 John 1 and 3 John 1, the truth, the truth, the light, the truth. And apart from that, nothing can cause you to understand. Nothing. Take it granted, nothing. And the heart of the men wherewith we have been calling for them to renovate their thinking. To get and get back to the reality of the truth in Christ. Truth, truth, truth. 
there is no greater pleasure we have to see that your children walk in truth, said Apostle John to the elder woman. We love to cherish and all those who love the truth will cherish. Therefore we have been told in 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, wise unto salvation which can make you this truth, training in righteousness so that you can know in Proverbs chapter 8 verse 20 which teaches the paths of the righteousness and the judgments of the tracks of the justice where our Lord our God causes them in Dikai Sune, Kai Hosiet is Thessalatia, so that now we can love only the righteousness of our Lord our God and walk in truth and be trained in His righteousness through proper reproof, rebuke, correction and absolutely training in His righteousness. Therefore the scriptures have been God breathed, Theonustas, because we are the one who have been made in His image for His glory. By Theonustas, the word that we have been given in our hands. The mediators have led their life, they do not even spare an inch. To say, we have not sent to declare the entire counsel of the Lord our God, but we have left their blood upon their own head. But today we are able to find the pastors are taking in charge, fattening themselves by the wool, by the meat and the milk of that absolute sheep. And these are becoming the ravenous wolves. But not to satiate them for the glory and the work of the Lord our God. We are able to find such pastors in our pulpits. If they would have been sent by the Lord our God, they would be more serious than the work what the Reformation movement brought along. But you go back and look after 500 years. How many believers have come for MGG? How many believers have understood that they are invisible heroes? How many believers have made known to realize that they have to be put on the new man and walk according to the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, not to walk in the old sin nature any further, not even a breath, not even a second even to think of. But in the divine energy, in the divine life, in the divine center where they have been chosen to work only for Christ. Wherever you find, you find angry. Wherever you find, you find sinning. Wherever you find, you find lies. Who is going to teach that? Who are going to train that? The father of lies. And this is in your mind to tell that you have been sent by the Lord. You have been appointed by the Lord. And they ran to teach you and to grab you out from the real word. And they make you to focus upon the miracles, healings and the tongues. And they call you, this is the right teaching. This is the right method. And they tell, I have been given the gift of prophecy. So I can look upon your online account, how much money you are going to get. And some moron tells that when he prays, they are going to fall in your home. Diamonds. <laughs> really. The lives of these great men who were the mediators to give this Bible in our hands. Whenever we look in the light of this man certainly causes us to weep, certainly makes us to once again to go back and to kneel down in his presence and write the word of the Lord and learn the word of the Lord very accurately and teach the word of the Lord so that our lives itself become the teaching of the word of the Lord. And do you know why they do that? They love darkness. They don't want to expose their deeds in the light of the word of Christ. They are constantly happy, seeking and searching. They may be happy in the terms of this world, but at the cost of grieving and squelching and lying, the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, not even able to remember the lives of those men who have laid for us even after 500 years, the Bible being not taught completely in the pulpits. The Bible not being made known in the real terms of the right reference Bible. And make them to understand. In 2 Timothy 4, 2, if it says, preach the word, Kerusathon Lagan, it has to be Colossians chapter 4, verses 2 through 6. Not having proper enlightenment in the mind of Christ, not having proper sense in the spiritual realm of the word of the Lord of our God. Do you know why? Because they are not been there in the truth or in the spirit or in the light. They are walking in darkness. And by that we mean even if you have your minute sin, thought, word or deed, which is against the mind of Christ according to His will, then you are walking in darkness. Running your ministry for gain. Do you not know what Second Corinthians chapter 12, verses 15 teaches to us? I love 
with a great relish in me to be spent for you. A love to be spent only for you in the love. And though you may, though you may not love me as abundantly as I love you, yet I love to come to give you the truth. If this is the pain and the plea of the heart of Apostle Paul, to ask the question, how many of them are able to do such love to the church? How many of them are really honoring to the word and through the word to the church? We call all of them under the ticket of Protestantism. In the way of the Roman Catholics, who went along to go against the mind of Christ, not able to show them the truth of the love for the daily work. Christ our Lord didn't do that. He made even the children to come unto him. He was a man who went for the people. He was not a man who were the way how the bishops were today. The way how the Pope have been respected as gods today. The manifestation of the power of the Spirit in the human realm to make him that he is from God is only through the proper teaching of the Word, proper explanation of the Word. Those who fear of a lot of God are ready to lay down their lives. They come to lay down their lives in such great extension, dear brethren, whether you believe it or not. Though they have the Cardinal B membership in the Roman Catholicism, they ignore it. Though Satan sponsors them like the way how Christ our Lord was being sponsored by Satan, just bow down to me, I will give you this entire world. No matter however the sponsorships they might have found by the Roman Catholics to tell the practices would be destroyed. And they love to give him an offering to the things pertaining to his children, to his wife, the greatest theological colleges or medical colleges or schools. Yet they did not compromise. Who is going to compromise for a value of shit on this earth? Apostle Paul quotes, Because of the superior knowledge of Christ, I counted everything to be human excreta, fit for nothing. But if you can ask furthermore in the enlightenment of Ezekiel chapter 3, we count everything more or less than the human excreta, because human excreta could be used as a fuel some extension that fuel was being used to cook. If Ezekiel wouldn't have intervened with our Lord to say, from my youth I haven't been defiled with such thing. He was given excuse to cook with cow dung rather than human excreture. How great would have been if Ezekiel would have been obeyed that word. And for us today, who would have been for us to understand a man who has gone through the standards to the Lord, counting the things of this world as human excreta, slipping 390 days to the left, 40 days to the right. Maybe I think in today's pastors, if you can ask them to do that and to eat a certain portion of meat and food, the way how Ezekiel was been warned to eat and to cook by his own human excreta, we could find certainly not many men to be qualified. But we count the value of the word of our Lord of our God to be greater, to be superior, than all the riches of this world to be put together to tell, to be less than human excreta what they have enjoyed. The terms and the standards of this human excreta, what they take. Therefore, even after 500 years, we are not able to find the great reformation movement yet in our force. This great reformation movement, wherewith you and I should take our lives and take in to fulfill the Ephesians, Philippians, and Colossians teachings in our pulpits. Because this age, says Ephesians 2 7, is the beginning of the ages which are going to roll over. And in this age, we pay only a short span of time of our life. 
those men who have been martyred for Christ for doing his work how great would be for them to think their life is worthy only for the glory of Lord and those who walk in the truth who cherish and nourish in the truth who abide in the truth love to take their life only for Christ they are not the way of the disciples who tell along when Christ our Lord calls them in Luke chapter 9 to say let me bury my father but our Lord said let the dead bury the dead but you follow me go and do the work of the Lord the other said I will go I'm going to bid a farewell which is very nearby the Lord said you're not fit because these two men who came along to tell they're able to do Lord's work, but our Lord says the one who puts his hand to plow and look back is not fit for the kingdom of Christ. And this is what how we are able to find today in our pulpits. Men coming to teach, to tell we are able to do Lord's work. But they turn back. They turn back not to teach the word of the Lord every day. They tell weekly months is enough. And in the meantime, let them go for weekly programs like Wednesday and again the Friday and again if I have any cottage meetings. Wherever you go, but preach the word. Make it a regular basis. Let them to come and attend the church. If in such great freedom what we are able to enjoy today, if once again those great reformers who have taken the Bible in their hands and given for us, if they would come, they would daily sit and teach, sit and teach, sit and teach the word of the Lord our God. And what a privilege it is for us to be enlightened in these terms by the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to make note of our lives to be worthy for His glory. If you are a bona fide gifted pastor, teacher, your work is to daily teach the word of the Lord our God. You can't waste your time in thinking that it's better for you to do in those terms. But never able to understand that simple little word until and wrongly divide the word of truth and make your prey to be absolutely for the thoughts of evil just for some pieces of bread and for the money in the ministry that you gain. The scripture of truth constantly shows the errors of this teaching where the people deny rapture, great tribulation of the millennial kingdom of our Lord with that one little word called as until. In Psalm 110 and in elsewhere, we have been noted to look. Lord said to Jesus, will sit at the right hand of God until his enemies are made his footstool. The Jewish temple will only remain desolate until Jews say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord our God in Matthew 23 verses 38 and 39. The Gospels, apart from John chapters verses 12 through 29 till to the point of verse number, chapter number 17 verses 26. Apart from that, you find the Gospels of the Jewish age. So until the Jews could say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord our God, the Jewish temple will remain desolate. Jerusalem shall be thrown down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles have been fulfilled. Luke chapter 21 verses 24. Obviously declaring a time coming when it will no longer be thrown down. And the heavens will receive Christ until the times of the restoration of all things. Acts chapter 3 verses 21. And spiritual blindness has happened to Israel, but only until the fullness of the Gentiles become in Romans 11, 25. Israel will suffer tribulation until the Spirit be poured upon, out upon them from on high, Isaiah chapter 32, verses 13 through 17. The unsaved dead will not be raised until the end of the millennium, Revelation chapter 20, verse 5. When the scripture is so clear for us, and in order to make our lives orient to the heavenly calling in Christ, by such great reformation movement given in our hands, yet you find denominations, yet you find not coming to worship our Lord under the terms of Humo Thai Madan, with one mind, with one accord, with one passion, and with one mouth, wherewith we all can reach to that one standard of manhood in Christ says Ephesians 4, 13 and 14. But yet what do we find? Divisions. They say pre-millennium, post-millennium, a millennium. 
Sometimes whenever we find if the Roman Catholic people would have done their work faithfully by daily teaching the word of the Lord and given this word accurately to everyone, not showing the way of papal authority or popery of authority, and cheat those innocent people who are also eligible for this greatest glorious life to reach MGG. Therefore the parable where our Lord our God says, the one who came in the first hour, the one who came in the last hour, yet for everyone the same dine being given. And they asked, how is it we worked for eight hours and he worked for only two hours, how the comparison to be the same? Then our Lord our God says, I am the master, I will what I do. Those innocent men, though they might have been hungry for the word of the Lord our God under the authority of this popal, or popery, they might have lost to reach MGG. But yet our Lord our God is faithful enough to give them equal justice at the judgment seat of Christ. But right now we are inexcusable. We have the completed canon. And if we are not able to make up our life to the standards of Christ, and reach MGG at the cost of those great men who have led their lives for us and given the Bible in our hands and to wrongly interpret them. You will be beaten with many strips, take it granted. The one who failed to know the will of the Lord of God with proper dispensing technique of dispensations or the one who failed to fear the word of the Lord of God through the proper bona fide gifted pastor teacher who teaches to you with right isagogical, categorical, nexitical explanation of the word with the right dispensing technique of dispensations and if you love to fail to seek him and search him, you are going to lose and is not interested even further to tell that how many people like him, how many people love his teachings, how many people follow his methods. He doesn't even care. He's answerable to the Lord. He knows that valuable seed for Christ, for which he sows every day from his word. And that valuable seed of Christ has been made known, the gospel, to the entire world under the creations of this earth, of this heaven. It reaches to every creation under this heaven. It is going to produce the greatest fruits as Colossians 1.6. And why and where is our failure? Not to rightly divide the word of the Lord of our God, nor that to remember and recollect, to reflect the right teachings of the mind of Christ in the church age. So the first until we find in Psalms 110 verse 1, and the second until we find until the Lord of our God could come, when the Jewish could say, Blessed is he that cometh, in Matthew 23, verses 38 and 39. And Jerusalem shall be, bored, shall be trodden down of the Gentiles, until the times of the Gentiles have been fulfilled, Luke chapter 21, verses 24. Obviously declaring a time coming when it will no longer be trodden down, but the heavens will receive Christ until the times of the restoration of all things, Acts chapter 3, verse 21. Spiritual blindness has happened to Israel, but only until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in Romans chapter 11 verse 25. Israel will suffer tribulation until the Spirit be poured out upon them from on high, Isaiah chapter 32 verses 30 through 17. And the unsaved dead will not be raised until the end of the millennium. The word of God is so powerful, and it will not bow to the systems of men. Christian, there is one more until that should thrill the challenge to our hearts in 1 Corinthians 11, 26. For as often as you shall eat this bread and drink the cup, you announce the death of the Lord until he comes. What a privilege it is for us to be mindful of his words every day that we come, to be the faithful true believer in Christ, by doing the works of the foundation before our Lord who made the divine good works by the fulfillment of the knowledge in our will, in the mind of Christ, so that we being rewarded fully in spite of our great protection from our Lord our God on this earth, in this devil's kingdom. He calls for us to enjoy those works and to come to be a faithful servant in the millennium kingdom. And that great kingdom, the wonderful grace of our Lord, because the problem with us is the people may communicate the words. The words we speak reveal what is in our hearts and minds. But Christ our Lord was the Word. Reveal the very heart and mind of God. It has been said even in Hebrews chapter 1 verses 1 and 2. Lord Jesus Christ is God's last word to mankind. And he declares in Hebrews 1, 1 and 2, God who at various times in various ways spoke 
in times past to the fathers by the, fa by the prophets, but in these last days by his Son. Lord Christ, the eternal Son of God, existed in the beginning. He never had a beginning. He is the eternal, eternal word he could say, before Abraham was I am. He is the God and he was with God. He is also the creative word. Christ Jesus our Lord is not only the word in eternity, but he is also the word in time and we see his function at the beginning of creation. And therefore we have been told, though the heaven earth will perish away, but his word abides forever. And Lord our God created Yahweh Elohim through his son Christ. And this world and all that is it was created by him only for him, says Colossians 1, 16-21. Apostle John goes us to remind that Christ our Lord is the incarnate Word. He came into this world conceived by Lord God the Holy Spirit. He became in the likeness of man, identifying with man in every aspect of life from birth to death. As a man, the Lord Jesus Christ humbled himself, becoming obedient even unto death, the death of the cruel cross. Showing the great obedience of Philippians chapter 2 verses 5 through 11 so that he could be named above every knee and every tongue so that they shall bow down. The full depth of grace and the truth poured out so that when we who know no sin was made sin on behalf of us so that we might gain the righteousness of Christ. And Christ our Lord is still sharing his word today to the world. And we have a message to tell. And what have we told lately to this world? The mind and the heart of your words are the words of Christ. Remember John 15, 26 and 27, the spirit of truth. He causes us to bear witness for his truth. And he leads us triumphant. Because from the RK we are for his truth. So think over these issues, dear brethren, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. In order to link to Lord God the Father, that you believe upon my Christ, my Lord, my Saviour, that is among itself, you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth falls for very simple, believing Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest part is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine, wherewith you shall learn to acquire to possess to know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teacher, the greatest matter is to carry Sathan Lagan, herald the word in season out of season, because of the diamond of my witnesses, where they have been called. The number one diamond of my witnesses in the infinity, for the Bible in our hands, the number two diamond of my witnesses are hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brother, not worry besides nature, the entire angelic host will be our witnesses. But what is our work? No matter how the chips may fall, our work is to rightly divide the word of the Lord of our God. Let's remember the lives of those great men. Even after 500 years, if you are not able to establish the MGG glory of our Lord our God by daily teaching the truth in our pulpits, we cannot end up this church age as long as we have breath in our nostrils in apostasy. Our duty is to pass down this torch to the next generation. Not for money, but wish to reflect the grace of our Lord graciously and freely. So think about these issues, dear brethren, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. Father, what a great privilege it is for us to understand Thy Word, to cherish and nourish in Thy Word, and to be spent for Thy Word, the greatest spiritual relish we find. The love that we may love to them, and they may, they, they may not pay back for us the same love in their times, to walk in Thy footsteps. But at all, Lord, You have been faithful enough to consider Thy works and to teach them the truth. We thank Thee for the long-suffering and long patience of all, so that none should perish, but everyone should come to the epinosis knowledge of Christ. We thank Thee for the great men who have sent for us in these 2,000 years of Christianity. Help us to lead in the right path. The meditation of our heart and the words of my mouth be acceptable in the sight of Lord. In Christ's matchless, peerless, gracious name we pray, Father. We Lord God, the Holy Spirit enlighten us in these terms. Amen. <laughs>